going on people lp2000 my back at you with another video and yes welcome back on behalf of summer kaiju to leslie chambers kaiju reviews and today i will be looking at the monster maker 28 model kit of godzilla 1974 from the classic fun explosive 1970 godzilla film godzilla versus mecha godzilla and as you can see i have the awesome kit here let's just get that let, let, let's get that established right now. This is an this is an amazing, awesome kit. You know what I mean? And the box. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's pretty much simple. Um, this video is by request of fellow Godzilla YouTuber um, William Shemitsky. Um, You know, you may know him better by his YouTube channel Godzilla sixty five. He does informative X plus figure reviews as well as model kit reviews and stuff like that. Great, great YouTube channel, great, great content provider. And he asked me if I could take a look at this um, figure right here. So that's the reason why I'm doing this uh, video. On behalf of William, Sh William Shemitsky, Godzilla 65. And normally I put the figure down, you know what I mean? Take a look at the box, you know, whatever. But let's just keep the box here. Let's keep them both here because I love this figure so much. Yes, I do. And this pretty much <laughs> this is what you see as far as the box. No legal jargon on the back, you know, a picture of Godzilla, you know, when he's not painted, basically, Godzilla, Godzilla 1974, Monster Maker 28 kit, you know what I mean? Um, inside, you know, there was like a reference pic of the model kit, you know, um, just to give you an idea if you build it and paint yourself on, on what it should or what it could look like, you know what I mean? And it just came in pieces, you know what I mean? So you have to have this kit built, you have to build and paint it yourself or hire somebody to do that for you, you know what I mean? So that's how that works. But that's pretty much it with the box. You know, it's very simple. You know, I like it. I'm going to keep it because of Godzilla 1974. Let me just get this out of the way right now. Godzilla 1974 is one of my most favorite incarnations of Godzilla. So anything pertaining to 74, I'm going to be there. You know what I mean? So let's just put this down right here. And this is the figure. Yes, 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 yes. And let me give a little backstory about this figure. Now, mind you, like I said, it's a model resin kit. You know what I mean? From sculptor Monster Maker 28. I think his name is Shinsuke Niwa. You know what I mean? Um, just an, an amazing, an amazing artist. Kind of like Yuji Sakai. You know what I mean? He has done great, great kaiju sculptures in the past. Great kaiju model kits, you know, whatever. Godzilla 1954, Godzilla 1966, Godzilla 1984, you know what I mean? Just to name a few. Um, all 30 centimeter, you know what I mean? Just great, great, massive, um, amazingly detailed resin pieces of our favorite kaijus. And also you may, um, also th th there's a, there's a tie-in with X Plus with this also, you know what I mean? Because, you know, mostly I do X Plus fig reviews, and yes, X Plus will be a part of this video. But X Plus has licensed a couple of sculpts from Monster Maker 28. And you have definitely seen them before on my channel, or as, as well as other channels out there. Like the Godzilla 1968 30cm, that was the Monster Maker 28 kit. The recently released GMK King Gija from X Plus, that was the Monster Maker 28 kit. Um, Gorosaurus 1967 30cm, that was a Monster Maker 28 kit. Angerous 1968 30 centimeter. That was a Monster Maker 28, Monster Maker 28 kit. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and as you know, all those figures are awesome. You know, it, but it was based off the awesome model resin kits from Monster Maker 28. And he released two of these, two 74s. The first one was, I, I believe, was released in 2006. It was smaller. It had somewhat of a different pose. Kind of, it, it was similar to this, but it was still somewhat different. Uh, his mouth was completely closed where you see have the, where this one is is slightly open, you know, whatever um, And his tail was laying flat on the ground like, you know, just just laying flat um, And then they came out with this one. I think I think 2014 I believe, you know, I'm not really that uh, Knowledgeable when it comes to model kids. I mean, I have a select few in my collection. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not I'm really sketchy on you know the history. I'm just going by what I research online you know, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that know more about this stuff than I do. I'm more of an amateur at best when it comes to model kits. Because I have no talent of building them, you know. I recognize that, you know what I mean? That's why I had a great, great friend of mine build and paint this kit for me, which I will get to in a couple of seconds. Um, but I got this model kit at G-Fest in 2015. The first time I ever went to G-Fest, you know what I mean? And when you go to, to G-Fest, you know, they have an awesome dealer's room, you know, where you get almost everything you want kaiju related in that in that room you know what i mean 
and I knew if I was if I were going if I was going to the dealer's room because you know they have X plus and everything, which is mostly what I collect. But I I say you know what if I'm going there, I want to get stuff that for one I'm gonna get stuff that I don't already have, and number two stuff that I can that, that I can that I can't easily access on the internet. You know with the X you know with X plus you can easily attain those from anywhere. Even more so now, back then, from back from back then. So when I was walking in the dealer's room, I saw this kit and I had to have it. You know what I mean? I got it from Kaiju Modeler. Um, thank you to my wife Sandra for helping me out getting it. I really appreciate it. I love you, babe. And afterwards, I had it sent off to a great, great, great friend of mine. You've heard his name many times before here on the channel, Mark Sang Yang. I had him build it and paint it for me, and this is how I got my hands on this figure. Um, and yes, this. It's such an amazing piece. It really is. And one thing about resin, you know, versus vinyl, resin captures more detail, you know. Um, vinyl does too, but resin does it just a little bit better, you know what I mean? Um, but for what I but for what I gather, when you build vinyl versus building resin, if you make a mistake as far as like the vinyl, it's easily, well, not exactly easy, but it's, uh, it's better served where, where you can just start all over again. You can just... Uh, if you mess up, you can just repaint it and just start all over again. With resin, it's kind of hard to do that. You know what I mean? Um, as a matter of fact, I tried. You know, before I sent this off to Mark Sang Yang, I tried to paint it. You know, I just paint a little bit, like like right here. I tried to paint a little bit right there. And after I saw that I wasn't good enough to do that, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take a chance of messing this figure up. Because figure like, like these are hard to come by, you know? Um, because the Monster Maker 28 makes like a select few number of these, you know, even lesser than what X Plus makes, you know what I mean? And it's not like I can mess this up and then buy another one on the internet. It doesn't work like that, you know, because these things are really, really rare. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to have my good friend Mark build and paint it for me, and he did an amazing job, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much the backstory involving me and this model kit, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's stop. So you know, you know how we do things around here. Let's get up close and personal with this awesome model kit of Godzilla 1974 from Monster Maker 28. All right, let's go. Okay, folks, I'm back up close and personal with Godzilla 1974 from Monster Maker 28. Yes, ain't he beautiful? Yes, yes, nod your head. He is, he's beautiful. Um, basically, Monster Maker 28 did an amazing job with the lightness of this figure, um, as well as the suit, you know what I mean? Um, he did a great job. Um, he just has that look from Godzilla 1974. And around that time, you know, Godzilla was in full, full-fledged superhero mode, you know what I mean? And after the events of, you know, Godzilla vs. Megalon, the previous film, um, not exactly the best Godzilla film in the world. You know, I love it. You know, I enjoy it. But Godzilla has somewhat of a playful look. As a matter of fact, let me bring this up right now. Hopefully it'll be in a shot. And yes, the 25 centimeter Godzilla 1973 from X Plus. And as you can see here, see how his uh, eyes are all rounded. He kind of looks like, uh, like a puppy dog. So basically what they did with the 74, they just made the eyes more menacing you know he had a somewhat uh it was a combination of a serious mean versus a serious mean superhero look you know he didn't look too, he didn't look too goofy like the 73 but yet he still maintained that serious mean edge to him with his eyes and basically what they did as far as the uh 73 excuse me as far as the 74 because the 74 is the same suit as the 73 is a variation of it as well as the 75 is a variation of the 74 so, but basically what they did, you see the dorsal plates right here on the 73? All they did was just rearrange the dorsal plates. It's pretty much the same suit, they just rearranged the dorsal plates. Like this dorsal plate right here is the 74's metal dorsal plate. This one right here is the uh, third one. This one right here is the bottom one. And this one right here is the top one. You know what I mean? That's all, the, all they pretty much did was just rearrange the dorsal plates and just change the, uh, the eyes. You know what I mean? And in 75, it's still the same suit as 74, but they just rounded the head a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much um that's cool with the uh comparison. 
between, you know, the suits, you know, whatever. And a month from now, we will have a 37 to 75 from X Plus, you know, but that's another story for another time. But I just want to just give you like a little variation between the suits and how it was modified and tweaked between the, the three movies. You know what I mean? So let's put 73 down right here and focus on the man at hand. So yes, sculpt wise is popping. It looks really, really, really good. And it's a massive kit. It's like 30, it is 30 centimeters. It's like maybe a 12, hovering around 13 inches. You know, I think the first one was like, with the first 74 from Monster Maker 28 was like maybe 11, 11 inches, 10 inches. It was somewhat smaller than this one. And they made this one um, really, really big to coincide with uh, a Mecha Godzilla 74 that Monster Maker did. You know what I mean? And that one was like maybe 13, 14 inches tall. Um, so, yeah, this is a massive kit. It's very, 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 very detailed. You know, he just has that... That awesome superhero look from Godzilla 1974. The pose is awesome. We know with his tail going up and down like this. You know, the paint job that Mark Sanye did was very, very, very good. Very, very awesome. You know, with the silver sheen on the, on his dorsal plates or whatever. And as you can see, his dorsal plates, this one right here is like it's waving more, to, more towards the left. Kind of like the gigantic series Godzilla 1962 with his... Largest dorsal plate on his back is like maybe swaying a little bit to the left to get off, give off the impression like when Godzilla was moving. You know, remember how when Godzilla used to move, his dorsal plates would also move. You know, they were like flimsy appendages on his back. So, and I like that. I like that uh, attention to detail that either X Plus or Monster Maker or any other model kit puts into their sculpts to give it more realism. You know what I mean? I really do enjoy that. So yes, it looks really, really good from the back. Like I said, the tail's popping. The uh, the sculpt is really really popping. You know what I mean? Um, just an awesome recreation of Godzilla 1974. It pretty much speaks for itself. You know what I mean? So I, will, I won't go into a lot of detail about it because basically basically it speaks for itself. You know what I mean? Such an awesome representation of um, Godzilla 1974. And if all those X Plus fans out there. Um, who are maybe, or maybe wondering if we're going to get one at some point. I think we will. You know, I think X Plus will get around to making a 74. We just have to wait. Um, a couple things that lead me to believe that um, is the fact, once again, they have contracted with Monster Maker 28 before of uh, making these monsters like Godzilla 1968, Angry 68, uh, you, you know, name a few. Um, like I said earlier, they're coming out with a Godzilla 1975 that's going to be next month to complete that lineup. So it's only a matter of time before we get a 74. Also, we have an upcoming set of the GMK Baragon and GMK Mothra, 25 centimeters um, figures. And those figures were, at, were actually Monster Maker 28 kit sculpts. So once again, X Plus has made a deal to bring those figure to us, figures to us. So it's only a matter of time before we do get a 74. We have to be a little bit patient, but trust me, it's coming. Whether it's 25 or 30, I prefer 30. Or do both, because, you know, they, they are, they're doing both of the 75. So why not do both of the 74? So trust me, it's on its way. You may see it next year. You never know. Because there are a lot of monsters that X Plus has not tapped into yet. And it's really baffling that of all the guys' little designs they have not tapped into, they have not done the 74 yet. Um, 74 is very, very popular amongst the fan base. And I don't understand why they haven't done it yet. Maybe they're saving it for a big moment. But trust me, once that happens, it will be a big moment and I will be there to pre-order it. Absolutely. So let's do a couple size comparisons and we'll wrap this review up. Thanks so much for hanging in with me. All right, let's go. Okay, folks, this is the first size comparison. I will keep these short and sweet. You know what I mean? Um, and yes, I talked about this figure earlier. This is the X plus 30 centimeter Angerist, you know, from Destroy All Monsters. And originally it was a Monster Maker 28 model kit, but... It has been converted into awesome X plus vinyl. You know what I mean? I just want to have this as a size comparison first to recreate, you know, the scene in the 74 film where Angerus shows up to challenge the imposter Godzilla. You know what I mean? Um, kind of like a mini Godzilla Raise Again reunion. You know what I mean? Except, you know, with their updated incarnations. Um, but yes, they, they, they size really well together. You know, and just seeing, seeing these two together just makes me... Think about, you know, that awesome fight scene, you know, whatever. Um, of course, I feel, we all feel bad for Angerish, you know what I mean? We all feel bad about how how that fight didn't didn't go well in his favor. But it was all by design. It was all to make, make it was all done to make, make Mechagazzo look very, 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 very strong. Um, 
So, yeah, it was fun to see those two scrap, you know, whatever. It was fun to see Angerus just jump all around, be very, very vibrant and just dynamic, you know, whatever. Too bad he couldn't, he couldn't have that same personification in 1972's Guys Over the Guy again. Um, but it was an awesome brief fight scene and really shows, it really showed how deadly Mechagodzilla was, how just brutal he was, how just relentless he was, you know what I mean? Um, of course, we all know what happened in, in, in that part of the film. You know, Godzilla comes back, you know, or, or so we think it's Godzilla. Although Toho didn't do a good job disguising the fact that it was Godzilla, you know, it wasn't Godzilla. You know, he, he didn't do his trademark roar every, every time he took a step. It sounded like something mechanical was, was taking a step. You know, I mean, of course, you know, this, these films were made for children. So it's not like, you know, they were trying to hide it. You know what I mean? Um, but when Angry shows up, you know, it's also um, um, cool to see some continuity because, you know, when Angry shows up, one of the characters say he wonders why Angry is fighting Godzilla since they're supposed to be friends. You know, cause at that point, Angry was Godzilla's right hand man, his closest ally. So I like the continuity. I, I like I like how they reference that little continuity that why would Angry want to fight Godzilla? You know what I mean? Just to leave him more of a mystery that maybe this isn't the real Godzilla. You know what I mean? So. Yes, they look great together. Awesome, you know. Hopefully, like I said, if S-Plus gets around to making it, making a 74, maybe they'll make a 30 centimeter so you can have this moment right here. All right? So let's do one more size comparison, and we'll be out of here. All right. Okay, folks, the last size comparison and the most appropriate. Yes, the 30 centimeter Mecha Godzilla 1974. Yes, 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 yes. I know I'm cheating a little bit because Mechagodzilla has that base underneath him to give him more size, um, just to make him look bigger than Godzilla because that's how it was in the film. You know, but once again, it just shows how massive this model kit is. Because if I were to took Mechagodzilla off the base, he would be eye to eye with Godzilla. I think a little bit shorter. and But that's not how it was in the film. So I like to have this base here. You know what I mean? And as you can see, they look great together. They really, really do. You know? And I've said this many, many times before. Mechagodzilla 74, or at least the Showa ones, are, it's my favorite version for Incarnation Mechagodzilla. You know? But in a way, he doesn't really look like Godzilla in certain respects. I think the Mechagodzilla that looks the most like Godzilla is maybe Kiryu, with the 93 coming a little bit second. But the 74 and 75, they look like Godzilla, but they look like, like an alien distorted version of Godzilla. You know? which makes him look more menacing, more intimidating. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they look great. I want to watch the movie now. Don't you want to watch the movie? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it with the size comparisons. You know, you know, this is awesome. Hopefully, they'll get around to not only making a 74 Godzilla worth of 30 or 25. Hopefully, we'll get a 30 centimeter version of the other monster in the film, King Caesar. Hopefully. But then again, I think it's only a matter of time before we do. But we do get both of either Godzilla 1974 or King Caesar. You know what I mean? It's only a matter of time. We just have to be patient. All right, so let's wrap this review up and I'll give you my thoughts of one of my most favorite Godzilla films of all time. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974. All right, let's go. Okay, folks, I'm back. Let's talk about Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974. Woo! I love this film. Yes, it is my fifth favorite Godzilla film of all time. You know what I mean? Now, Godzilla vs. Guy Again 1972 is my second. You know what I mean? Um, but trust me, it could interchange. You know what I mean? Because I love this film so, so, so much. I know in my past videos, I've talked about Mechagodzilla a lot. You know, 70, you know the 74 Mechagodzilla a lot. You know, whatever. But I haven't really talked much about Godzilla. So once again, I want to thank William Shemaisky for requesting this video. That way I can talk more about one of my most favorite incarnations of Godzilla in the 1974. And the kaiju sequences in the film are very, 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 very awesome. You know what I mean? Um, like even the opening titles. And mind you, this is the 20th anniversary of Godzilla um, um, being on the movie screens at this point, you know, 1974, since the first one was, was um, brought out in 1954, you know, like everything involving Godzilla in that film is awesome. And I mentioned the 54 because remember how the opening starts in 74, you know, we see Angus on Monster Island, then we'll, then we see 
like a mountain explode and we hear Godzilla's roar and we see his name just flash on the screen like that. You know, we don't see Godzilla, but we hear his roar. We know he's there. And then it just goes into the title sequence. Just an awesome, awesome just recreation, in my opinion, of 1954. Uh, more so Godzilla King of the Monsters. Remember how in that beginning of that film, they show the ocean, you hear Godzilla's roar, they flash his name on the screen, you know. Um, I think it was kind of a little homage there, you know what I mean? Um, so once again, the kaiju sequences involving Godzilla are very, 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 very awesome. And I mentioned before, between this one and the next film, Terameka Godzilla, I actually prefer this film more. Now, I love 75, don't get me wrong, but I just prefer this one just a little bit more on how they basically spliced the Godzilla action all throughout the film. You don't have to wait a long time for any kind of kaiju action. As a matter of fact, Godzilla is basically in the opening act, or so we think is Godzilla, you know? The fact you have Mecha Godzilla disguised as Godzilla, you know, with this suit or whatever, and he just rampages his way across Japan. He beats up and basically cripples Angerus, and then which, which leads to one of the most favorite scenes of all time, where Godzilla is destroying an oil refinery, and then the real Godzilla pops up out of the warehouse. What he was doing in that warehouse, I have no idea. Maybe you could pop down in the comment section what you, what you think he was um, doing in the warehouse. Um, even though I like that fight scene between the two Godzillas, you know, every now and then I wonder, that's like a weird way to make your entrance. But still, it was still awesome nonetheless because it was spontaneous. It came out of nowhere. And it basically confirmed what we all knew from the beginning that this first Godzilla wasn't the real Godzilla. You know what I mean? Um, also, the fact that, you know, anger is peeled off a little bit, a little bit of his flesh, exposing the metal underneath. You know, it basically gave it away. Uh, but even even before, like I said, he didn't do his trademark roar. Every time he took a step, it, it sounded like something mechanical was making a step. So, Toho, Toho didn't do a good job of hiding it, you know, whatever. But once again, it was made for children. And I'm sure they didn't want to stress them out, you know, wondering what's going on. You know, it was pretty much straightforward. Straightforward, fun film. You know, like I mentioned before, with the oil refinery fight scene, it was great, you know, whatever. And after Mechagodzilla reveals himself, Godzilla basically handles it like a boss, you know. In 1972, remember when he was fighting King Ghidorah and Gigan, and Gigan was banging him on the head when he was, like, doing that loop-de-loop, -loop, you know, whatever. And Godzilla was groggy, and he was making his way towards the Godzilla Tower. And he smacks his head, you know, to get a, to shake the cobwebs. And he looks at the Godzilla Tower. He noticed it. He was like, wait a minute. And he, he kind of like was taken aback about it. But in this one, after Mecha Godzilla reveals himself, Godzilla just stands there and was like, okay, so you're a metal version of me. You know what I mean? Godzilla just basically like, okay, what you got? And then after that, you know, confrontation, Godzilla is thrown into the water. The impact of the blast between Mecha Godzilla's eye beams and his radioactive breath, the force threw him back into the water, and all we saw was a pool of blood, and basically just made you think that Godzilla was dead, or he was not gonna be, gonna be able to come back. You know what I mean? And out of all the 70s films, this is like the first film, excuse me, the first film where Godzilla had to regroup, you know? In 71, 72, 73, and 75, Godzilla kept on pressing forward. You know, even if he were not down by overwhelming odds, he just kept on pressing forward. But in this film, considering how unstoppable and how um, killer they portrayed Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla had to regroup. Godzilla had to go back to Monster Island. Another favorite scene of mine when he gets struck by lightning and he has those um, magnetic powers given to him. Just another, another, another great scene. You know what I mean? But it just shows how powerful Mecha Godzilla it was in that film because Godzilla had to regroup. He had to, you know, reassess some things. You know, that's a testament on how powerful Mecha Godzilla was. And then it goes to the fight scene at the very end after King Caesar and Mecha Godzilla get into it. And, you know, King Caesar, he, he he's okay. He does okay for, for the most part. But then Mecha Godzilla, you know, just proves how powerful and how unstoppable he is. And he gets the better of King Caesar. Then Godzilla shows up or whatever. Which leads to my, my one criticism of this Godzilla. I mean, I love the look. I love the suit. It's like I, like I said, one, one of my most favorite guys in incarnation. It would probably be number three behind 91 and 64. So yeah, it, it, it would be number three. But the one thing that I don't really care for, or it's just, it's a minor criticism. It's not like a bad criticism. It's the fact that Godzilla didn't really show off his 
fighting skills that much in this film. You know, in 71, 72, 73, 75, he was a great versatile fighter, even more so in the 60s films. But in this film, he's not really given the chance to show how a versatile fighter he is. As a matter of fact, the only time we see Godzilla as a great, great fighter is when Mechagodzilla is disguised as him. So we don't get we don't really get a chance to see the real Godzilla scrap as he did in 73 or 71 or 75 or whatever. I think that's kind of a letdown. But also at the same time, it was it, it was done to make Mechagodzilla look strong. Because Mechagodzilla, his greatest offense was was him attacking from afar with his weapons, you know, or attacking from the air. But once Godzilla was able to get his hands on him and, and immobilize him, that that was that was done to expose Mechagodzilla's true weakness. He couldn't really defend himself, you know, in close quarters combat, you know, whatever. But even though I don't really like the fact that Godzilla didn't show how versatile of versatile of a fighter he was in this film, it, he makes up for it by showing how tough he was. Because when Mechagodzilla gives all his weapons to him, you know, the finger missiles, toe missiles, the knee missiles, the the uh, chest lightning, the, um, the, 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 the eye laser beams, he throws everything he he can at, at Godzilla and King Caesar, but Godzilla gets the, uh, get the most of the damage and just basically makes him bleed like we've never seen Godzilla bleed before and he had those missiles pierce Godzilla, you know, whatever. But Godzilla kept on persevering. He kept on fighting through that that relentless onslaught and just basically just hung in there and showed how tough he really was. And once the opportunity was presented to him, he got his hands on Mecha Godzilla, broke his daggone neck, and that was the end of the movie. So, yes, I really do enjoy um that part you know even though he doesn't show how good of a fighter he was you know but then again there are reasons for that for that you know mecha gazo don't really give him a chance to show how good of a fighter he was because he always was just shooting his weapons from afar because you remember the fight scene every time Godzilla would try to get close to him mecha gazo would always like shoot his weapons at him and keep him away from him which was smart you know you know you know what i mean but also at the same time this film really shows how tough Godzilla is kind of like how gamma was in his films it shows how tough Godzilla was, how relentless he was, how he, he was determined to take it to Mecha Godzilla. He was determined to avenge what Mecha Godzilla has done to him up until that point. And it's one of the best Godzilla performances ever in a Godzilla film. So, yes, I highly recommend this film, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 1974. Yes, 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 you would not be disappointed. And I highly recommend this Monster Maker 28 Godzilla 1974 kit. And that pretty much concludes, concludes my review of the Monster Maker 28 Godzilla 1974 kit. From the cool, classic, explosive 1970s fun Godzilla film, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. If you have any questions, holler me down in the comment section. Or hit me up on Facebook, Beer Mark Calloway. We we'll definitely go from there. Once again, William Shemaisky, thank you so much for requesting this. I really do appreciate it. I hope I was able to answer your questions and give you what you needed. You know what I mean? And if you can find this guy for a good price, whew. <laughs> I'm sorry, but these things are kind of hard to come by, especially these, um, this kid. As well, and you know, as a matter of fact, Monster Maker 28 kits in general are kind of hard to come by unless you get on them as soon as they're as they're out. If you're able to pre-order one, that's like the best time to do it. But trying to get one in the aftermarket is it's going to be very, very, very expensive. As a matter of fact, I did see one of these kits like on one of the Facebook groups like two weeks ago, and and it was it, it was a, it was worth at least the person was asking a little bit of good chunk of change for it. So, you know, if you do find one, you have to spend some money, but if it's worth it to you and if you're able to build and paint it to to your um, um, uh, desires or, or, you know, whatever, I say go for it. Just don't go to, don't, don't go overboard on the investment or just wait for the eventual X Plus to bring one out. Trust me, X Plus will make one. It's only a matter of time. You know, with the recent news of the, that we got, that we got. A gigantic Godzilla 1964 coming. Yes, 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 yes. We got that. We know we got that coming either this year or sometime next year, but we know that's coming. Trust me, it's only a matter of time before S Plus does a 74. It's like the one last Godzilla incarnation that they have not done yet. And it's very, very popular. And like I said, I don't understand why they haven't done it yet. Maybe they're saving it for, for, for a big moment. Um, but I can see them doing that, both 30 and 25, you know. So we have to wait. Just be patient. But it's only a matter of time. But once again, if you can find one of these kits for a good price, I say go for it. You know, and if you can build and paint it to whatever you like, I say go for that too. Either way, you can't go wrong with this Monster Maker 28 kit of Godzilla 1974. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see y'all again on this figure and move review. All right. Y'all take it easy.